Josh Kroshauer, editor of Jewish Insider, joins me. Josh, do you have small children? I do. Two, two young children of elementary school age. Okay, I just wanted to warn you. I just got a picture of my two-year-old grandchild, T-Rex Teddy. Uh, his mom found him in the garage with a frozen waffle on a scooter, having created chaos with his dad's tools. So I'm just telling you, don't ever turn your back, Josh. That's a little parenting advice. Uh, I did not know until this morning that Tammy Baldwin and Sherrod Brown signed a letter highly critical of the Israeli government and calling on the Biden administration to publicly outline a path for the United States to recognize a Palestinian state. Are they crazy? Well, we've known, Hugh, that uh, both Tammy Baldwin and Sherrod Brown, both of whom are facing very tough uh, re-election bids this year, have been progressives. Um, but what's interesting when you look at the political map this year, Hugh, is that uh, Baldwin especially has taken positions both vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian state. I think he, the even more notable one in, in the Baldwin legislative record is she um, backed the resolution by Bernie Sanders trying to block military aid to Israel. Uh, which is uh, caught our eye, needless to say. Uh, and, and it comes at a time when almost every other Democrat up for re-election in 2024, whether it's, you know, but Tester, Casey, Jackie Rosen, certainly, who's been one of the most pro-Israel lawmakers on the Democratic side in Congress, uh, have been staunch supporters of Israel as it defends itself against Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. Baldwin has been the outlier. Brown Brown a little, little bit, but, but Baldwin uh, has... Um, on some key issues broken uh, with the, the support for Israel. And, and you mentioned the Palestinian state, uh, but I think the more interesting one is, is, is the align with Bernie Sanders to block military aid or some parts of military sales to Israel. But you know, Josh, I, there is a not insignificant Jewish American population outside of Cleveland, outside of Columbus, outside of Cincinnati. All of them came to the march in support of Israel when I went down to the mall to march with people in, in the fall. There were big, lots of buses from Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati. What is Sherrod Brown thinking? I'm not sure I saw any Madison, Wisconsin. I'm not sure what the Jewish American population is. But I'm sure there are a lot of supporters of Israel who are not Jewish in Wisconsin. This is just bad politics. Yeah, so Ohio has one of the biggest Jewish populations in the entire country. A top, top five, top ten, I think. Um, when you look at the data, a shared, uh, we, we talk a lot about, uh, the kit, what we call the Kishka's test when it comes to, you know, fighting against anti-Semitism, supporting Israel. You know, there's some, Democrats I don't know what Kishka means, Josh. Kishka's I don't know what Kishka word. means. It means guts. Do you have it? You know, is, is, are you, do you really care about the issue? I mean, there, there are a lot of lawmakers okay. on various issues that will vote a certain way, but who really <clears> has the passion? Who really, uh, is, is there when it counts? And, you know, the question about Sherrod Brown is I think his voting record largely um, has been in support of Israel. But unlike someone like a Jackie Rosen, even Bob Casey, who has uh, co-sponsored some of the, the major initiatives fighting anti-Semitism, supporting Israel, uh, Brown has always been a little more progressive and may not have been on, on the front lines on, on some of those issues. Uh, Josh, I wanted to ask you, uh, when I had former President Trump on last week, he brought up the fact that there were some Jewish Americans participating in the anti-Israel, pro-Hamas, pro-Hezbollah demonstrations. I pointed out, I think they're outliers. Do we have any numbers on what percentage of American Jews are against Israel's existence or think they're misusing their power in Gaza or Lebanon? It's got to be very small. It's a very fringe uh, figure. Uh, there is some polling. Uh, it's probably around, you know, low single digits, mid single digits. Support for Israel, broadly speaking, is around 80, 90 plus percent of, of Jewish voters. So these are, uh, you know, there's a lot of tokenism where you do have um, on some of these campuses, they do try to highlight um, some of the most radical Jewish uh, students uh, to lead anti-Israel groups. But if you look at the data, if you look at the polling of, of Jewish voters, of Jewish Americans, uh, 90 percent, you know, 80, 90 percent plus a support for Israel. Was it fair for me to describe them to the former president as outliers? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is okay, it's a fringe good. view within the Jewish, within the Jewish friend. Now, now I want to go to the call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu. I, I don't know what they talked about. You don't know what they talked about. There are leaks from American sources saying that Netanyahu promised not to hit energy or nuclear sites. 
I don't believe those leaks. I believe those are leaks intended to push Netanyahu. Do you believe the leaks? I, I would not believe everything you read. There's a lot of, as you note, Q, strategic leaking to make um, maybe one side, maybe make Iran in this case, think Israel's going to do one thing and they may do something else. Um, you know, I think that's American leaking. It was the Washington Post that first broke the story. I think that's probably coming from the American side, uh, given uh, the administration's um, sense of what Israel might do. Um, but look, I also do think that you, you do have that call with between Biden and Netanyahu was the first one in quite some time. And it comes as, it, you know, we know this from the pu public rhetoric from this administration. They don't want escalation. They have been urging caution. Uh, they, they transferred uh, missile defense uh, systems to, to Israel in a sign of their support. But I think that that may come with conditions on, behind the scenes. Uh, and, and I'm not surprised that, that this is leaking out, that, um, that, that Israel's not or may not uh, go after nuclear and energy sites, because I don't think that's what this administration wants, and they're trying to caution against it. Now, Josh, I want to close with this. The prime minister went on video in English and Hebrew to say to the UN forces, get out. There are more than two dozen countries. There might be three dozen countries with up to 10,000 observers. They are ineffective. They've done nothing. They are now acting as human shields, not knowingly, but inevitably. It's sort of, it would be reckless disregard for the facts in an American legal system. Do you think Israel will be deterred by their presence after giving fair warning that they've got to get the hell out of the way? Well, uh, will they be, I, th th there's, I, I think that uh, something will be worked out. I think, I mean, it would not be in Israel's interest to um, see any, uh, any UN employees get hurt uh, in any operations in Lebanon, but I think they're trying to work behind the scenes to make sure that that's the case. Um, look, the the UN this is sort of this is sort of a, a UN issue, frankly, because the resolution that uh, codifies a line of that that would protect Israel and in, in, in that southern part of Lebanon uh, is a UN resolution that um, that, uh, that that they should be enforcing, and they're not. Um, so that that is something that really irks uh, Israel for good reason. And uh, it doesn't seem like UNIFIL is, is really doing their job. Well, there are tunnels under the UNIFIL sites. And yesterday, the IDF released, that's a, that's a supposition on my part. Uh, there was a released photo by the IDF yesterday of a Hezbollah weapons cache very close to a UNIFIL site. So they can't even patrol their own grounds, Josh. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And, and Guterres, is anti-Semitic. I can only conclude that the well, the UN boss is an anti-Semite. Welcome to the UN, Hugh. You know this as well as well as a lot of a lot of Americans that the UN is, um, you know, represents the interests of, of bad actors as much as democracies. But look, the problem is like President Biden, Vice President Harris also uh, kind of echoed some of the UN concerns. Uh, Biden, I think, over the weekend urged Israel to st stop its uh, engagement. Uh, where the UNIFIL positions are in southern Lebanon, and I think the vice president also, um, uh, maybe it was just Biden, but uh, the, you know the, there is there is a Western uh, criticism as well, and that's that's what's holding that that's what's leading to some of the diplomacy taking place right now. All right, Josh, important question: You're not a Yankees fan, are you? No, I'm a Yankees hater, actually. From oh, my, good, my good. So Memorial we're not Day. we're not distressed by the guard setback last night. I'm not worried. Tanner Bybee tonight. Versus uh, Cole, who do you think wins? Yeah, I mean, Cole is, has been pitching really well. Uh, Bybee is, is the de facto ace for the Guardians. I, I think one-to-one. -one. I like uh, Stephen Kwan. I like Jose Ramirez as my, my fantasy baseball stalwart. So, uh, yeah, I like the, the Tribe in game two. Oh, you picked Ho Jose this year? Good for you. I have had, he is, There's only one player in baseball. There's only one player in baseball better than Jose. He has been one of my uh, fantasy baseball stalwarts uh, over over many years. So yes, I, yeah, uh, good for you, I Josh Koshow. I, I had no radio. idea. You you are far more knowledgeable about matters baseball than my producer Dwayne, who doesn't like the Guardians and doesn't know who Jose Ramirez is. Thank you, Josh Koshow. Follow him on X at Josh Koshow.